What's up, 4th and 5th? My name is Ellie. Happy Sunday. We miss you guys so much. And we are about to go into worship, my favorite time of the day. So let's go. All right, guys, let's stand up and let's sing together. We're going to start with you stood before me. What can I say? So what can I say? We're going to learn even more about how we can be generous with the right heart today. Let's watch this week's episode of The Loop Show. We have so much stuff. Let's get rid of it! Hang on for the loop! Three, two, one. Hey, Ellie, what's I'm Ricky. I'm Jamie. And today we're going to be talking about stuff. All kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah. Yep. I mean, like, stuff crust. Uh, I love stuff crust. Stuffers. 
um, Stouffer's uh, pizza rolls. I have too much earwax. Well, thank you for sharing. So, raise your hand if you feel like you have a ton of stuff. Yep, yep, yep new hands. Yep. I see you, see you, see you. Mm -hmm. Raise your hand if you feel like you need even more stuff. Oh, I could always go for more yep, stuff. Yep, 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 I yep. gotcha. More is better, mm -hmm. no better. But today we have a challenge called Tough, tough stuff. stuff. Oh yeah, and it is going to test our physical upper body strength, come on. <sighs> strength and agility. I think I should probably stretch before this one. That is a good idea. So while we stretch, check out this video from our friend Chaz. <sighs> Tough stuff. Tough stuff. Tough. Mom? Mom? Yes? Have you seen my phone? What? Have you seen my phone? No, why? I was just recording a video, but now I can't find it. Did you check your drawer? No, why would it be? <laughs> Wow. Did you find it? Maybe. Yes. What in the world? How long has this been in here? It's still yellowish, couldn't be more than a couple days. Well, this is embarrassing. Hey, by show of banana peels, anybody else have a chair or drawer in their house that they just use for storing a bunch of random stuff until it becomes a trash can that's not actually a trash can? See, this is what happens when we don't think intentionally about what's trash and what's not. <sighs> or just what we should and should not keep in our drawers. And if you think about it, our hearts are actually pretty similar. Throughout the days, weeks, and years in our lives, there's a lot of junk that we receive from others, pick up, and hold on to when we never even needed it, wanted it, or a lot of times asked for it in the first place. But we keep these things because we like the way that they make us feel, or we just get too lazy to clean it up, and then we get used to the junk being there, and then it starts adding up and getting in the way of how we should be living. One example of junk can be how we receive praise from people. Now don't get me wrong, compliments are great. However, when I start storing them up in my heart the wrong way, I slowly tend to lean towards living for the approval of people rather than the approval of God. And junk can even be bad, like emotional pain. We live in a fallen world and sometimes people will hurt us or we will hurt others. But instead of choosing forgiveness, letting go of what happened and moving forward with the peace of Christ, we'll hold on to memories and try to rationalize why something happened. But Jesus doesn't call us to live our lives like that. Nah, that's not what he wants for us. In Matthew chapter six, verses 19 to 21, he commands us not to store up perishable treasures on earth, junk but rather imperishable treasures in heaven. If our hearts are full of junk, then what's gonna flow out? Holding on to stuff that we need to let go of gets in the way of our call to selflessly serve others and live like Jesus did. So understand that the desires of our heart will always reflect what we are treasuring or holding on to the most. Your heart is a special place. It gets really attached to things. And the way it feels about those things starts to control the way you think and feel about everything else. The other thing about your heart is that it grows based off of what you put into it. Now, I know some people think if you love God and others, you'll grow a big heart, but if you're mean and materialistic, your heart will shrink. Listen, it's more like if you love God and others, your heart grows and thrives off the chance to love God and others. But if you focus on loving stuff more than the things that matter, well, your heart doesn't shrink. It just grows a bigger desire for more stuff. Does that make sense? The point is, it's worth it to keep the junk out of your heart. Because either way, what you put in it will grow. We are going to play a uh, stuff challenge. Okay. There's going to be some trivia given to you guys, and you will be racing to this horn right here. Go ahead and give that a squeeze, Ricky. Oh. You squeeze on that when you know you have the answer. Okay. If you're incorrect, you will get an item or something that you have to carry for the next round. Cool. So let's head back over there. According to legend, what holiday goodies were shaped to resemble a shepherd's staff as a way to remind no. children? Candy cane. That is correct. So Ricky, come on over here. Jamie, you can go ahead and put it on this. It's a weight vest. Oh, gosh. How much does this weigh? This is 20 extra pounds. Oh, good. According to the folklore of Austria and other countries, what horned figure punishes naughty children at Christmas? Krampus. Oh. 
That is correct. Man. So Jamie, Ricky, you can go ahead and head back. Oh my. Oh, oh, this is so not fair. This is like a third of my body weight. What well-known Christmas carol became the first song ever broadcast from space in 1965? <laughs> Jingle bells. Ooh, that is correct. <laughs> How did you know <laughs> that? You gotta get a backpack of stuff. <laughs> oh, more stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead and head back. <laughs> What Christmas carol does the Peanuts gang sing at the end of a Charlie Brown Christmas? Uh, no, 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 uh, uh, no, 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 uh, Heart the Herald Angel Sea! All right, you guys are both getting a lot of stuff. I feel like we both look like Ninja Turtles right now. Ninja what traditional turtles. Christmas decoration is actually a parasitic plant? Holly, Holly, this is Holly, Holly, Holly. I am, I am going to count Jamie as correct on that because I have a Christmas Holly. How many reindeer are featured in the poem Twas the Night Before Christmas? <laughs> Dancing Pink. The answer. 10, 12, 12. I said 10, and then I realized it's 12, 7. Eight? Oh. <laughs> what animated 2004 film is about a train that carries kids to the North Pole on Christmas Eve? <laughs> Polar Express! Aww. Oh, I didn't even know how to hold it. Oh, well, I didn't know that we were allowed to. <sighs> this is not going well for me. What Christmas themed ballet premiered in St. Ah! Peter's Russia? Oh, the Nutcracker! The Nutcracker! Do we need to fix this at all? Yeah. Oh, we might work that out now. Where was Jesus born? <laughs> Bethlehem! You were right. Do believe it is Bethlehem? <laughs> Thank you. Let's keep this going! In the song Frosty the Snowman, what made Frosty come to life? <laughs> 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 the magic hat! I see a snowman. He has this magic hat. It was his magic little hat. <laughs> the hat. Magic hat. What is frankincense? Ooh, it's the balmy fluid! It's one of the gifts given to Mary and Joseph when Jesus was born. You know what? I was looking for a precious perfume. <laughs> I'll give you the one with the grip, though. How yeah. would you like to hold this? Yeah, right over there. True or false? The Bible says Jesus was born in December. <laughs> that is false. That is correct. Jamie is our winner. <laughs> Whee! That's stuff. Victory chant, I'm the winner. Ah! Wow. Jamie, since you won, you can give Ricky all your stuff. Oh, what? wonderful. No, no. I'll put this. I don't have any room right. left. This in here. <laughs> Okay, I'm trying to lift. Oh no! Oh no! Well, Go for it! Well, <laughs> he's a loser, I'm the winner! <laughs> win, win, win. All I do is win, win, win. Wheel of Kings! Here we go. Wheel of Kings, spin the wheel. Wheel of Kings, wheel of Kings. Oh, All right. nice! Let's go. There's that oh, one for you. you, and this one for me. Oh. Oh, that doesn't smell good. This. You ready? Oh no. Cheers. Uh. Oh, that's got to be like dirty feet. <laughs> what is? Is wait, this gravy? Wait, no, wait a second. <laughs> it's garlic. I feel like I've. No, I've it's no egg. It's rotten egg, isn't it? I know. I've not no rotten egg. Gizzards. Uh, uh, turkey. And gravy, mashed potatoes it's, and gravy. It's rotisserie chicken? Oh Rotisserie my. chicken? The rotisserie chicken should never be candy caned. Ugh. Wheel, Wheel of Canes! Canes! Wheel, Wheel of Canes! Hi guys, we're gonna make a stuffed smoothie today. We're gonna start with the base of everything that you already have that's 
everything that you really need, like your bed and food, and I'm just gonna add some of this. This represents the, the, the PlayStation that you, you got last year, but then the, these tomatoes are gonna symbolize the, the, the PlayStation that you really need this Christmas. And, and this tapioca pudding is gonna be your constant need to be liked on social media, so we're just gonna add a whole lot of that. Because because your your insecurities are abounding without all the likes on social media, and then this this dog food is gonna be uh, symbolizing the dog that you had to get, and now it kind of just sits in the backyard. Oh, and these these light bulbs are for uh, the the all it time it takes to level up in the the game that you're playing right now, and we're just gonna go ahead and throw in some Advil. These staples are the, the Wi-Fi that you said you needed, and so you upgraded to the $60 a month plan, and these iron filings are for the workout gear. Here's the body that you admire, and then you can just add more stuff, and if you just get some of these, and some of these, and, and you, just, you just keep adding stuff. You just make sure that all this stuff is happening exactly the way you wanted it, um, and then after that, you can, you can either warm up or cool down your soul, depending on if you're angry or lonely. I'm feeling pretty lonely, so we're gonna add some of that. Uh, and then, and, and then, there's yogurt for protein. Perfect. So now, we're just gonna go ahead and stuff it, and it's, it blends up, it blends up pretty well. Just get it good and blended. And there you have it, a stuffed smoothie. Just, it's, it's a, everything that you wanted in one glass. Okay, bye. Hey Loop, what is up? My name is Robbie and I have an important question that I need to ask you. What is on? your Christmas wish list. Maybe you're like me and you're looking forward to the new video game or clothes from your favorite store. Maybe it's the new iPhone that dropped or toys just like these that have hit stores. What is on your Christmas wish list? And more importantly, what does it say about your heart? Because if you notice, no matter how much we have, we always want more. It never really satisfies us. I mean, it does for a small period of time, but then the new version's released. Our old one begins to break. It fades, it loses its value and we, in turn, lose interest for it. You know, Jesus actually had something to say about this very subject in a famous talk he gave called Sermon on the Mount. In the middle of it, he says this, don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves come in and steal them. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. You see, it's impossible to satisfy our heart's desire for stuff. But here's the thing, stuff isn't bad, but valuing stuff more than people is. And that's a challenge at times, to care for the people around you, to care for those in your school, for caring for those on your sports team, to care for your parents and your sibling and your whole family. But here's what I know. When you begin to care for those in your lives, stories arise of the difference and the impact that you have made in their life. And isn't that what we want? In return, to have more stories to share than stuff to show. All right, let me help you get some of this stuff off of you. Thank you. It's a heavy load, heavy burden. Oh, that feels so great. I'll just tell you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Answering yeah. two of your questions? Mm -hmm. A lot harder when you're carrying a bunch of stuff. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. you just gotta purge. Is that better? Do you wanna get this off? Oh yeah, I forgot. So there is one last thing that we wanna give one of you. Jamie <gasps> says you're the winner. Good, I don't, I don't want anything. Get this. I don't want anything. The winner! Yes. And we're gonna open this next week. Stuff can weigh you down. And as we are thinking about being more generous this week, <sighs> don't forget to unstuff. Your heart. Yes, if you've got stuff weighing you down, we challenge you to get rid of it. And until next time, enjoy, enjoy the, the ride. ride. I feel lighter. I feel like a winner. <laughs> mm.
That episode was a great reminder that we should check our hearts, that our hearts should be in the right place when we give. You know, one of my favorite verses is in Matthew, and it's Matthew 6, verse 19, which says, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Rather, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Giving is a great way to keep our hearts in the right position because when we give to God, we're telling Him that He's more important than our stuff. And when we give, we're able to focus on what matters most, like loving God and loving others. Let's look for opportunities this week where we can love on others, where we can give of our time and our help to others. Will you guys pray with me? God, I thank you for giving the greatest gift of your son to us. Thank you for loving us so much that you care about our lives. Thank you for knowing where we are and for, for being willing to help us. God, I'm praying that you would search our hearts, God, that, that we would develop cheerful hearts, that we would develop hearts to serve, God, hearts to love others the way that you want us to, Lord. God, we are so grateful for your love to us, for your help to us, God. I'm praying that you would show us opportunities, that you would place us in positions where we could be generous with others, where we could, we could give of our time, God. We could give whatever you want us to give. So Jesus, we love you. We thank you for this week. God, show us how to give, show us how to be generous. Help us to be more like you, Lord, in your name, amen. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this week. We're going to be learning even more about generosity next week, and I am so excited. So we'll see you guys next week. Hey, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. You know, Father's Day is coming up, and we want to do something really special for all the dads and father figures in our lives. So if you think that you have the greatest dad of all time, I want you to text the word DAD to 571-209-5000 and tell us why your dad is the greatest of all time. We'll see you next week.